So, um, the parametric equations question x equals sine squared theta, y is 4 sine theta minus sine cubed theta for theta between minus pi over 2 and pi by 2. Show that dy by dx is equal to that. Right. Well, it's quite nice to show that question. But we, we know where we're going with this. We need to differentiate these two things individually. So we're going to start with x is sine squared theta. And so it would be dx by d theta that we find. Now don't, don't get things confused. We're going to talk about integration later on. Remember there's, a, there's an issue, isn't there, with integrating sine squared theta. But there's no problem with differentiating it. Differentiating it is fine. So we think about it as being the, uh, the chain rule, or kind of the big function and the, the little function, the, or big bear, little bear, as we sometimes talk about it. So the, the big thing is something squared. It's sine theta all squared. And if you differentiate something squared, you get twice the something to the power 1. We're going to multiply by the, the derivative of the inside function, which is sine theta. If we differentiate sine theta, we get cos theta, remembering the minus signs however we choose to do that. Um, right, so that's dx by d theta. dy by d theta, actually fairly similar, we're going to differentiate 4 sine theta to get 4 cos theta. And we're going to differentiate sine cubed. Well, if you differentiate something cubed, you get 3 times the something squared. And then we're going to differentiate, or multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is sine theta. So we've got cos theta coming in there. Okay, so that's it. That's all we've got. Um, we're asked to find dy by dx. Remember to get the order right now, so we're doing that one, divide by that one. dy by dx is that, 4 cos theta minus 3 sine squared theta cos squared theta over 2 sine theta cos theta. Um, we've got three marks. You could probably get away with it. Writing hence and then the answer that you were looking for. I think you could probably. But maybe to play safe, we're going to try and show that we do know how to get from there to where we're ending up with. And can you see what's happened? We've got a common factor of cos theta on the top, which if we take out, that's 4 minus 3 sine squared theta. And we've got 2 sine theta cos theta on the bottom, so that common factor can cancel to leave us with 4 minus 3 sine squared theta over 2 sine theta. And that was where we were heading towards, wasn't it? Yes. Okay, find the coordinates of the point on the curve at which the gradient is 2. So now we're told to find when dy by dx equals 2. 4 minus 3 sine squared theta of 2 sine theta equals 2. Now by this stage we're probably um, making sure our calculators are in radians all the time anyway, aren't we? Because, because we've got used to that. Um, but especially if we're doing any calculus, any differentiation or integration with sine, cos or tan, it has to be in radians that we're working. So we'll remember that when we come to it. We're going to multiply through by the 2 sine theta. And this is starting to look really like one of those, I'm taking this to the other side, is that right? One of those um, core two questions where you have to, yeah, with a stealth quadratic, good, where you have to use your, your identities and use your, when I mean, it's, it's kind of already done, it's already all in terms of sine theta. You might, can we just factorise this straight away? Sometimes you may have written this as being 3, what can we use? 3s squared plus 4s minus 4 is 0. And then try and factorise that by doing stuff. You, 
Are you confident enough just to factorise it now? No. After that, does that? Calculator does it. Is that the Casio FX991 ES Plus? <laughs> um, you could multiply first and last terms together and then think what, what two things times to give minus 12 and add to give plus 4 and it, that would be 6 and 2. Um, would it? Yes. There we are. So 12s squared. 6s minus 2s minus 4 is 0, so 6s. Oops, there we are. No, hang on. What have we done? So that was a 3, good. Oof. Great, using my perfect method for factorizing and doing it wrongly. That was a three. Ha ha. There we go. Yes. Oh, it's worked. Giving us s plus two times three s minus two. Whew. So we've got this was all about sine. So sine theta is minus two and sine theta is two thirds, I think. We've ended up with that. Um, of course, sine only goes between plus and minus one, so sine theta can't be minus two. No solutions from that bit. If we do inverse sine of two thirds, then we get. I haven't got a code. Oh, no. it's an old Aurora AX595 TV. Rubbish. Um, I've got one in a box in the office to do an unboxing video with when I get a bit of time. That'll be exciting, won't it? 0.7297. And then we need the other value because um, we do need to check. Remember, we're dealing here with theta in the range minus pi by 2 to pi by 2, so actually. I don't think we're going to get another value, are we? I love the cat diagram. Um, this was sign. It was positive. So it's there. But if we're looking between minus pi by 2 and plus pi by 2, there's only one solution that, that is in the range. So the only answer that we want is 0 0.730 to three significant figures. That's it. Coordinates. Oh, good. Find the coordinates. <laughs> right. Um, so what have we found? We found theta. So we now need to find the coordinates. Therefore, if theta is 0.7297x is sine of that. Um, is that what it said? X is sine, sine squared theta. Well, hang on. Um, sine theta is two thirds, so that's two thirds squared. So that would be four over nine. And y is actual well, y is four sine theta minus sine cubed theta, and sine theta is two thirds. So actually, finding that value of theta is not particularly relevant, was it? Um, four times two thirds minus two-thirds <coughs> cubed gives us something. Oh, forgot to cube it. Nearly there. It's going well. 64 over 27. Brilliant. Okay, that's a bit mean asking us for the coordinates, wasn't it? Was that the end of the question? No! Find the Cartesian, a Cartesian equation of the curve, giving your answer in the form y squared is f of x. Okay? Um, oh, man. I'm not reading the question at all. <laughs>
you see, again, in, in four four, you be really careful not to miss out a part of the question. They're much kinder to you than they used to be, you know, because you've got the answer booklet and you've got the gaps for each bit of the question. Whereas before, when it, it wasn't structured like that, it was much easier to miss things out and get confused. So now if you see a gap, you know that you haven't done that. Um, show that the curve has no stationary points. Well, that would mean if it had stationary points, if dy by dx equals zero, and actually if dy by dx equals zero, that would imply, we could do this even if we got confused about the first part, that would imply that 4 minus 3 sine squared theta would be zero, because it's only the top line that matters, isn't it? And if we rearrange that, that would mean that sine squared theta is 4 thirds, and sine theta is plus or minus the square root of 4 thirds, but the square root of 4 thirds is greater than 1. It's outside the range of minus 1 to plus 1, isn't it? Um, is uh, the, the, what can I say? How can I, how can I express this at the end? Let's say, um, as the modulus of sine theta is, it's got to be less than 1, there are no values. reasonable ending to that. Um, where next? We've now got part four to do. Find the Cartesian equation of the curve, giving you answer in the form y squared is f of x. So we've got x is sine squared theta. We're going to need to try and eliminate theta from what we're doing here. Um, we have got a clue in that we, we need to involve y squared in this. So let's have a look at what y squared would give us before we do anything else. We've been told, right at the start of the question, that y is 4 sine theta minus sine cubed theta. Um, I, want, I want to have a think about what y squared would be to see if I can do some elimination with this. I've got also, of course, remember I've got x is sine squared theta. Well, um, should we should we just multiply it out, or should we factorise it first and then multiply? It? Let's, um, uh, let's make things slightly easier for ourselves. And let's say that y is also equal to sine theta times 4 minus sine squared theta. Let's, uh, let's do that, just because that would help slightly. So y squared is if you square this, you get sine squared theta times 4 minus sine squared theta squared. Actually, I think I'm going to avoid multiplying this out at all. Because look, having written it like this now, x is sine squared theta. So let's replace the sine squared thetas with x. <coughs> and now we have y squared as a function of x. And I'm feeling quite glad that I didn't just dive straight in and multiply that by itself and then try and tidy it up because then I might have wanted to factorise it. So there we go. Is it alright, Matthew? Great. David's still writing through it. Oh, and that's maths.